Hello everyone, it's your girl Mia for Mia's Cuisine, Mia's Fit Body and Mia's Nation. How are you all doing? I hope you're preparing hard and strong for the holiday by going into my YouTube channels to see what you can prepare for your family or friends this holiday. There's a lot to get out of it, so take advantage of it. And please don't spend more than more than you have saved. So minimize your spending as much as possible. Anyway, today's video is about packaging, shipping, and preserving your African food items. I have a recent method on how to ship my African food items. A while ago, I asked my sister to make me some food items and mail it. But when she went to DHL or the post, she was told she cannot mail crayfish, a goosey, and smoked fish. That was shocking to me because those are the main things I truly need. Don't get me wrong. I need all of that stuff. But crayfish, a goosey, and smoked fish... And my core items if i need those i can do with anything i can just mix up anything for my local african store and good to go so why trying to battle that that choice or that news a friend of mine informed me that she have a new method that she ship her stuff from nigeria to edmonton that she used cargo mail so you just Pack your things as usual, mostly the Ziploc, and take it to the airport and say you want to ship via cargo. She told me it was cheaper since it comes to the airport and what the airport does, the airport just contacts you to let you know your things are there and you pick it up. All she had to pay was $3 or $3.50 to get her, lot of, her stuff from Nigeria. Anyway, I said I was going to try it, which I did. First thing first, my things are here. Let's go into how it all unfolded with this new method. It almost cost me an arm and a leg, but luckily I still have those body parts intact. intact so I'm happy for that. But it was really different with us from Cameroon, being that our airport is smaller and we are not as exposed as Nigeria. So... The only places that you can ship from Cameroon is Montreal or Monrea, and so, as some people call it, and Toronto. So no parcel from Cameroon can come to Edmonton or other smaller provinces except Toronto or Monrea. So that was the first issue. So I had to contact a family friend in Toronto to ship the stuff over to him then he will have to pick it up from the warehouse and mail them to me. It was a lot to register, but you know what a girl, girl needs? I needed food, and I would do anything. I would go through any length to get those things to me, and that's exactly what I did. The good news about the cargo method is it arrived when the flight arrived, and that's two days maximum three days. So it's very, very fast. And I don't think it's, it, I can say it's cost effective too, because knowing that it will arrive within two or three days, you get your stuff as, as well as with the DHL or post or Cameroon post. So it was different the way it was shipped to me, um, being that it had to go through another route. I can't complain as long as the things make it to their destination, that's all we are hoping for. Because once you have those goods at your doorstep, in your home, nothing else matters. You don't even think about the pressure or about what you went through actually getting those things to your home. Anyway, to add to that, first I gave my sister maybe, I think, $800 400 to buy the stuff and prepare and 400 for mailing which is about so 800 dollars is about um 400 dollars is about 200,000 which is about 400,000 for 800 dollars then when the things got to Toronto 
I had to pay a whooping $175 again to remove them from custom and maybe another a hundred and change to be mailed to me. So I can say give and take the total for me to actually have this good at my home. It's about $1,200, which might be too much if you think for food items. But this is the thing as a finance business and banking major, major I realized that once you tally, you divide the 1200 by 365 days. The amount per day for these food items is about $2 to $3, which is okay. Because that's how I look at things in the long run. That's if you can ration it. If you can use the goods, the food items sparingly. Don't just go about throwing crayfish in a little bit of okra just because you have it at your home. Trust me, it will last. And if you can do that, you won't even, you won't actually, you won't feel the cost, the amount of money that you spend. Anyway, so that's my method, cargo method. So go to the airport, pack, package everything into your Ziploc bag. Another thing is you can even take additional uh, Ziploc because in order for these things to go into the flight, they actually poke everything with a knife. They poke everything to make sure what you are saying they are actually what you are, actually what they are. So they poke it so you, are, you can tell your family members or whoever is doing this for you to go with an additional Ziploc so you are not losing some of your food items on the ground or something of stuff like that. So that's my method and that's what I have for you to share. And this is my bitter leaf. Your bitter leaf actually stays in your cabinet as long as no water goes close to it, it can last there for as long as possible. It stays in your cabinet. Have you heard the, the, the latest advantages of beta leaf? It has even been made into a pill now. So it's really good. And that is the only way you can benefit from what it offers is actually eating the real deal, not the one that has been mixed, that has been pasteurized, that you don't even know if it's bitter leaf. No, the real deal, and the only way you can get the real deal is actually getting it from Cameroon, from the farm, drying it to the sun and into your home. That's the only way we can get it, since we can actually ship flesh. Okay. This is my goosey. You know what this means? It means some a goosey pudding and Miondo is going down in my house this Christmas. Check out my YouTube channel for the recipe of a goosey pudding and Miondo. And this can also be found in your local not in your local grocery store, in your African store. Yes, those most African store today, like I'm speaking from experience, for my African store in Edmonton, a goosey have been mixed so much with so many things that you don't even know that that's a goosey you are eating. So I like it when I get the original, the authenticity is what I need for my country. That's why I will go through all the length to get these food items to, to my home. This is smoked fish. Smoked fish, you actually put it in the freezer. You soak it, a little bit of what you need overnight, and use it in the morning. So it stays in the freezer. And pepper, like when they are sending you pepper package, try to let them know that they should put it in this water bottle or glycerin bottle like this so it preserves the flavor in the dried pepper. And same goes with the bungo chobi spice. Anything spicy, make sure it goes into a bottle like this. And even the pepper soup spice, it actually preserves the flavor. Whereas if you have it in a Ziploc bag, you can, eat, you can ex easily lose flavor. So let it be in something like this, in a container of salt. This is my arrow. I have a lot of arrow. It stays in your cabinet just like the bitter leaf. As long as water doesn't go close to it, you're good. And it can last there for as long as you need it. 
Yes, mine. Pool spices, pool spices. Pool spices will be good to go into something like this to preserve the flavor as well. But for now, it was sent to me through the Ziploc. So I have like a storage container, like a storage food bin that I put all of this stuff in it. So that my home is not smelling like an African store. I do that as well. This is my snail. Your snail goes into your freezer. And you take it, you soak it overnight. Once you need it the next day, you wash, boil again, and use. So it goes into the freezer. So good with eel. This is my crayfish. Your crayfish. My crayfish also stays in my cabinet. I have like a spice container that I will, I will cut portion of it and put it in there and use on a daily basis. The overall... The big bulk, the big bag of it goes into my cabinet more bitterly. And I even got myself some glycerin. Like my glycerin always comes from Cameroon. I just believe it's original. Sometimes it's so hard to live without the stuff you grew up. You grew up actually knowing. So but if you have people that can help you to bring this stuff to you, people that are truthful, trustworthy, to bring this stuff to you without actually ripping you off is beneficial. So I will give thanks to my sister for going through the trouble to gather me this stuff. I can't thank her enough. She's always been there for me. So this is my glycerin. I also have some rope, which I use for coal. Like when you have coal, you have a pot of hot water. Take some of the rope, cut out the portion, put it in that warm water and cover it with blanket. <laughs> yes, that's my medicine. I'm all traditional. This is also some bitter cola. Bitter cola is very good for indigestion and, and upset stomach. So this will go into your freezer. And you remove a little bit of it and put it into your fridge and you use it as you need it and replenishes it with the one in the freezer. This is my Ogbono. Is that Ogbono? Yeah, Ogbono. Ogbono is very difficult to preserve because no matter how much you blend it, it always comes up tangled up. Because um, any amount of air that goes into it builds it up, make it, makes it hard. So what you do once you have your bono, you actually re-blend with your coffee blender to, to make it softer. So that's a bono. But this actually stays in your cabinet as well. And this is my Jansang. So this is the new method I've been having with my Jansang. What I do with my injasang is that I'll actually blend it and package it in little, little bundles like this using the cling wrap and I put it in my freezer. This is because when I need it, I don't have to remove the entire package of the injasang which will eliminate some of its flavor. Rather, I remove only what is needed to prepare that meal. So package it based on the quantity you need to cook a specific meal, maybe in different sizes. So this is what I've been doing with my jasa nowadays. And what else do I have? And this is my ok okonobong. Lots of it. Okonobong also stays in the freezer. And you already know, I already have videos of Okonobong soup, bitter leaf soup, ero, Ogbono. All of these videos are available to you to try and to make your kitchen spicy, yummy, delicious. More smoke fish, like I said before, your smoke fish stays in your freezer and you remove it as you need it the night before. Once again, here is me. I'm so happy to have these food items before Christmas. So I just decided to share 
the method I use, which I, to me, was effective to, act, to actually get them to my home at a very short space of time. And even though the items had to go through another route, through Toronto, it still took me less than a week to get to my home. Less than two weeks, I mean to say. Less than two weeks to get to me, which is not actually bad, you know. So think about it. If you need some items, especially with the situation now in our country, it's very difficult for us to go home as we, as much as we will want to. But at the same time, we are grateful that we have people there that can help us to package and bring this stuff right to our home so we can preserve and keep our culture, our heritage, and our authenticity. Once again, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. It's been a pleasure sharing my ideas and what I know to you guys and it's always a pleasure helping you guys cook and becoming better cooks i may say <laughs> feeding your kids feeding your husband and feeding the entire family thanks again for being a fan it's always a pleasure i love you guys bye